Hello and good day. For today, our topic is costs segregation techniques. In cost segregation techniques, we will study the popular methods used in separating fixed costs from variable costs. I-review muna natin yung classification of cost according to behavior because this classification of cost according to behavior is very important in our topic for today. Under this classification, we have three. First is variable cost, second is fixed cost, and third is mixed cost. Recall that variable cost per total or the total variable cost varies directly with cost driver and the variable cost per cost driver is constant. Also recall that fixed cost per total or total fixed cost is constant and the fixed cost per cost driver varies inversely with the cost driver. But take note that these cost behavior patterns are valid or true only within the relevant range and the time period under consideration. Remember, meron tayong relevant range assumption at meron din tayong time assumption or time period assumption. Yung pangatlo ay mixed cost. Ang mixed cost, ito yung cost na merong variable at fixed components. But take note, para mas magamit siya ng management, hindi dapat magkasama ang variable at fixed. In other words, these mixed costs must be segregated into variable and fixed portions. Our problem now is how to segregate mixed cost into variable and fixed. Dito na papasok ang costs segregation techniques. The cost segregation techniques are basically methods used in separating fixed from variable costs. Meaning to say, ito yung methods or techniques na gagamitin para masegregate yung mixed cost into variable and fixed costs. There are actually three cost segregation techniques and they are high-low method, least squares method, and scatter graph method. For today, we will focus on the first cost segregation technique and that is the high-low method. Before I discuss the high-low method, dapat malaman nyo muna yung cost function or cost formula. The cost function is expressed as y is equal to a plus bx. In accounting, y is the total costs. In mathematics, y is the dependent variable. In accounting, A is the total fixed costs. In mathematics, A is the vertical or y-axis intercept. In accounting, B is the variable cost per cost driver. In mathematics, B is the slope of the line. In accounting, X is the activity or cost driver. In mathematics, X is the independent variable. And the last one, BX is collectively called as the total variable costs. Yung Y ay yung total costs or mixed costs. 
At tinatawag din siya as dependent variable. Bakit tinawag na dependent variable yung y? Tinawag na dependent variable yung y kasi nakadepende ang kanyang value dun kay x. Nakadepende yung value ni y sa value ni x. That is why the y is the dependent variable. Yung x naman, that is the activity or cost driver. Tinatawag din siya as independent variable. Bakit tinawag na independent variable yung x? Tinawag na independent variable yung x kasi hindi nakadepende ang kanyang value dun sa value ni y. Or hindi nakadepende yung value ni x sa value ng y. That is why it is called as independent variable. Remember this formula or cost function because we will use this cost function in our computation later. The first method in segregating variable and fixed costs is the high-low method. The high-low method is the traditional method of costs segregation. Kapag sinabing traditional, it means old. Hindi na siya bagong method. In statistics, it is called as the range analysis. Under the high-low method, the fixed and variable portions of the mixed costs are computed from two sample data points, the highest and lowest points based on activity or cost driver. Kaya siya tinawag na high-low method kasi ang gagamitin na points sa pag-compute ay yung highest point at yung lowest point. And the highest and lowest points are based on activity or cost driver. In order for you to better understand the high-low method, here is an example. The controller of Pandemic Hospital would like to come up with a cost formula that links admitting department costs to the number of patients admitted during a month. The admitting department's costs and the number of patients admitted during the past nine months follow. For the month of April, the number of patients is 18 and the admitting department's cost is 15,600 pesos. For the month of May, the number of patients is 19 and the admitting department's cost is 15,200 pesos. For the month of June, the number of patients is 17, and the admitting department's cost is 13,700 pesos. For the month of July, the number of patients is 15, and the admitting department's cost is 14,600 pesos. For the month of August, the number of patients is 15, and the admitting department's cost is 14,300 pesos. For the month of September, the number of patients is 11, and the admitting department's cost is 13,200 pesos. For the month of October, the number of patients is 11, and the admitting department's cost is 12,800 pesos. For the month of November, the number of patients is 48, and the admitting department's cost is 72,500 
pesos. And for the month of December, the number of patients is 16 and the admitting department's cost is 14,000 pesos. Required, using the high-low method, determine the following. First, variable cost per unit. Second, annual fixed costs. Third, monthly cost function. And fourth, department's estimated cost, assuming 12 patients will be admitted next month. Requirement number one, variable cost per unit. Yung tinutukoy na variable cost per unit dito ay yung variable cost per patient or yung tinatawag na variable cost per cost driver. In order for you to compute the variable cost per cost driver, use the following formula. Variable cost per cost driver is equal to the difference between the highest total costs and the lowest total costs over the difference between the highest cost driver and the lowest cost driver. In other words, highest total costs minus lowest total costs over highest cost driver minus lowest cost driver. In this problem, yung number of patients, yan ang X or cost driver. Yung admitting department's cost, yan naman ang Y or total costs or mixed costs. In identifying the highest and lowest points, ang base nyo palagi ay yung cost driver. In this problem, the cost driver is the number of patients. That means, sa pag-identify ng highest point at lowest point, dito kayo sa number of patients na tumingin. The highest point under the number of patients is 48. But although ito yung highest point under the number of patients, hindi siya pwedeng i-consider as the highest cost driver. Why? Kasi yung 48, sobrang layo siya dun sa 18, 19, 17, 15, 15, 11, 11, and 16. That means yung 48 ay outside na ng relevant range or beyond the relevant range. Remember, meron tayong tinatawag na relevant range assumption. At ito na yung application ng relevant range assumption. Since yung 48 ay hindi pwedeng tawagin na highest cost driver, that means, i-ignore natin siya at hindi isasama sa computation. Actually, this is called as outlier. Therefore, ang ating highest cost driver ay 19. Next, how about the lowest cost driver? Here, meron tayong dalawang 11. 11 sa September at 11 sa October. Wala tayong problem if merong isang 11. Pero pag may dalawang 11 or merong dalawang lowest points, of course, merong magiging problema because hindi mo alam kung anong pipiliin mo dyan sa dalawang 11. If you are on the low side, choose the point with the lowest cost. And if you are on the high side, choose the point with the highest cost. Ang mas mababang 
cost between 12,800 and 13,200 ay 12,800. Therefore, ang lowest cost driver ay yung 11 in October. Therefore, this is the lowest cost driver. Ang highest total cost naman ay 15,200 at ang lowest total cost ay 12,800 pesos. Now, we can already compute for the variable cost per cost driver. The variable cost per cost driver is equal to 15,200 minus 12,800 over 19 minus 11. 15,200 minus 12,800 that is equal to 2,400. 19 minus 11 that is equal to 8. 2,400 pesos divided by 8 that is equal to 300 pesos per patient. Ang ating variable cost per patient ay 300 pesos. And that is our answer in number 1. 300 pesos per patient. Next, requirement number 2, annual fixed costs. In computing the annual fixed costs, we can use either the highest point or the lowest point. Kahit anong gamitin ninyo, whether yung highest point or lowest point, pareho pa rin ang lalabas na answer. Unahin natin gamitin yung highest point. Ang cost function ay y is equal to a plus bx. Recall that y is the total cost or mixed cost, a is the total fixed cost, b is the variable cost per cost driver, and x is the cost driver. Ang y ay 15,200, yung b ay 300, at yung x ay 19. So that will become 15,200 is equal to a, Plus 300 times 19. 15,200 is equal to A plus 300 times 19. That is equal to 5,700. Since ang hinahanap ay yung A or yung fixed cost, A is equal to 15,200 minus 5,700. 15,200 minus 5,700, that is equal to 9,500. Therefore, A is equal to 9,500. Yan na ba yung annual fixed costs? No, it's not yet the annual fixed cost. Kasi yung mga data natin sa problem ay monthly data. Therefore, yung 9,500 pesos dito, yan yung monthly fixed cost. This is 9,500 pesos per month. Therefore, since ang hinahanap ay annual fixed costs, kailangan pa nating i-multiply yung 9,500 pesos sa 12 months. 9,500 pesos times 12 months, that is equal to 114,000 pesos. At yang 114,000 pesos, yan ang ating annual fixed costs. Gamitin naman natin yung lowest point. Y is equal to A plus BX. Ang Y ay yung 12,000 800 pesos. B ay 300 at X ay 11. So that will become 12,800 is equal to A plus 300 times 11. 
12,800 is equal to A plus 300 times 11 that is equal to 3,300. Since ang hinahanap ay fixed costs, A is equal to 12,800 minus 3,300. Therefore, A is equal to 9,500. Of course, that 9,500 is the monthly fixed cost. Kailangan pa rin natin niyang i-multiply sa 12 months. 9,500 times 12 months, that is equal to 114,000 pesos. And that 114,000 pesos is the annual fixed costs. Observe na kahit anong gamitin natin, whether the highest point or the lowest point, Pareho pa rin yung lumabas na annual fixed costs. Next, requirement number three. Monthly cost function. Nakompute na natin kanina yung value ng A at value ng B. Therefore, we can now determine the monthly cost function. The monthly cost function is y is equal to 9,500 plus 300x. And that is the answer sa number 3. Yung 9,500, yan yung total fixed cost. At yung 300, yan yung variable cost per patient. Take note... Pag nagsusulat kayo ng cost function, dapat may value ang A at may value ang B. Next, requirement number 4. Department's estimated cost, assuming 12 patients will be admitted next month. In order to answer this requirement, gagamitin natin yung monthly cost function. Ang monthly cost function ay y is equal to 9,500 plus 300x. Isa substitute lang natin yung 12 sa x. y is equal to 9,500 plus 300 times 12. Y is equal to 9,500 plus 300 times 12. 300 times 12, that is equal to 3,600. Therefore, Y is equal to 13,100 pesos. And that 13,100 pesos is the department's estimated cost Assuming 12 patients will be admitted next month. mag lang tayo. Answer sa number 1 ay 300 pesos. Answer sa number 2 ay 114,000 pesos. Answer sa number 3 ay Y is equal to 9,500 plus 300x. At ang answer sa number 4 ay 13,100 pesos. Observe that the high-low method utilizes only two points in doing a cost analysis, making it a least accurate method. Diba based on the problem na sinagotan natin, ginamit natin yung highest point at lowest point. Meaning to say, two points lang yung ating ginamit sa computation. The highest point and the lowest point. And that is the reason why the high-low method is a least accurate method. Kasi hindi natin ginamit yung ibang data na available. One of the advantages of high-low method is that it is simple to use 
and it uses less complex computations. Aside from that, there's a lack of formality in cost estimation in the high-low method. Kung merong advantages, of course, meron ding disadvantages and limitations. Unang disadvantage ng high-low method ay the high-low method is not representative of entire data as it is based on just two activity levels. Thus, outlier may be included in the computation. Diniscuss ko kanina yung outlier. Pag merong outlier, you have to ignore. Aside from that, another disadvantage or limitation is that high-low method does not account for the effect of inflation on a portion of financial data which could result in overestimation of the variable cost element of a mixed cost. In other words, ini-ignore ng high-low method ang effect ng inflation. And that ends the discussion in the high-low method.